Well, the first uh, amendment, the confusion amendment, uh, as uh, they call it, the, fa the family amendment, uh, is incredibly vague. Nobody really knows what it means at all. And even when we ask the government what the definition means, the government are contradicting themselves. I asked Thomas Byrne, you know, is, can a person be in a, a marriage? Uh, with one person and a durable relationship with another person at the same time? And he said yes. So two constitutionally recognized marriage equivalent relationships at the same time. Where does like, succession and wills come into that? What's the story with social welfare and taxation? You know, even immigration and, and family law. Um, it's incredible we're talking about, you know, durable relationships maybe being on the basis of Christmas cards or wedding invitations. Like, this is going to be a solicitor's paradise. You're going to have families upon families having to work out uh, difficulties and differences by going to the courts. But people don't have hundreds of thousands of euros to spend over five or six years pursuing justice uh, in the courts. We've asked simply that the government would define exactly what a durable relationship is. They've refused to do so. Uh, uh, up until now. This is wrong because democracy is about people deciding what they want to put into the constitution, not a judge. And in terms of the, the care element of the referendum, we heard uh, Tanish the Michal Martin say yesterday that carers who are you know, not female want recognition under the constitution. Do you think that it's necessary for a constitutional amendment to bring that into reality? Well, we would have liked to have seen the language updated. We would like to have seen maybe fathers included with mothers, uh, to be honest. Uh, but I think it's incredible that in, in, on Sunday, all the TDs are going to have photographs of themselves with their mothers, saying how important mothers are, how special they were in their lives. But two days previous, they're looking for people to delete the only reference to mothers uh, in the Constitution. You know, I think that this, the CARE Amendment was actually designed by the Department of Finance because what it does is it insulates the government from any budgetary costs in terms of families looking for care. Care has never been as devalued at the moment. You know, child care uh, providers are closing on a weekly basis. Nursing homes are closing, you know, every month. Children are being put into state care and going missing in unregulated uh, providers at the moment. And yet this government have provided an amendment which locates care in the family, between family members, and insulates the government from their responsibility. This is a slap on the face to carers. Well, I'm very concerned about the holding of this referendum. I don't think it's necessary. Certainly, in my own constituency, two counties, Leash and Offaly, no, what, nobody, not one person, has raised with me the need for this referendum. So I'm just wondering who's behind it. Have the NGOs got the year of the minister and government, which we feel they may have? Who's behind this squandering of 20 million euro? which will see absolutely nothing in terms of rights. There's no rights for disabled people. There's no new rights for carers. And yet we're seeing 20 million lashed. I'm very concerned also about the fact that we're going to see a lot of confusion in terms of our legal system. We're going to see cases brought in terms of immigration law, in terms of tax law, pension law, family law. I feel that there's so many uh, issues and indeed if this referendum passes it will cause chaos. And that's why I have been very strongly advocating for a no vote with my colleague Matty McGrath. And you've spoken about the lack of public demand for these changes. Do you think there's a, a, good le a decent level of public awareness as to what the public are actually being asked to vote on? I don't believe there's enough awareness. Now, in fairness, the No campaign, and I want to commend my colleagues in the No campaign, they've been very, very strong um, between us TDs and indeed our colleagues in the Shannon. We have raised it and we have certainly tried to create more awareness. But in terms of media, um, apart from yourselves, if we look at RTE, for instance, and uh, other other broadcasters, you know, it hasn't been it hasn't been very clear. Perhaps were it not for Maria Steen and Michael McDowell making very good arguments on RTE. I don't believe people would have the awareness they have today and certainly if it was left up to government I think it would be um, misunderstood. I feel that they're sending the wrong message out to people. You know the whole issue about women in the home it's a woman's wish and it's he, she that should choose and she alone if she wishes to remain in the home or go out to work. But what this referendum will do if passed it will force women out uh, you know, out of economic necessity, out to work. And I believe women should have the right to choose whether they want to stay at home or whether they want to work. It's only fair. So I certainly when it comes down to government and national media, were it not for the very strong no campaign team, we wouldn't have the clear message we have. And there's a feeling that the vote may be tipping towards a no as we come closer to the actual date. Do you think that that's true? 
as an shock to Nigel. I certainly hope so, and I would concur uh, completely with Carl here when she asked the questions who brought this on, why. It certainly was the NGOs. We know there were 16 meetings of an interdepartmental group that met, and we know that Tror, one of the major NGOs that promote uh, different issues, were involved in that. They won't release the minutes of those until after the vote. What are they hiding? They brought it in then uh, to the Dáil, and they had no uh, pre legislative scrutiny. The committee waived their right for pre legislative scrutiny. And it's there is where we could have got the answers that Carl mentioned about the impact of durable relationship on, um, on inheritance tax and uh, taxation matters across the board for families and people, partners and, you know, how many partners are, are going to be or what is a durable relationship. Could have all been explained and teased out. No. They rushed it through. Then we had an amendment in the rural independent groups, Carl and I and, and our colleagues, and uh, we never reached it. There were 60 amendments in a two-hour debate and two referendum, imagine, two pieces of legislation, two amendments to the Constitution, uh, an hour each, all debate in the doll. No amendment was reached. It was guillotine and bulldozed too. And they got three hours in the Senate and, and it was challenged there. But again, I want to co- 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 to Senator McDowell and Senator Ronan Mullen, uh, Shannon Coke and Freshen, a couple of people like that, they have done tremendous work. There's not, there's not 10 Arachnus members that are uh, on the no side. You have the might of every party, the whole political institutions, and all the army of NGOs, which Cal uh, found out, or Fraggart and Kesht, a couple, couple of Minohens, she found out that they're costing six, almost six billion a year, the NGOs. So it's time this woke agenda was stopped in its tracks. What do you think about the leader of the opposition, Mary Lou MacDonald, saying that if no carries in the referendum, Sinn Féin will rerun it looking for a yes next time? Oh, it's so fast, so I Shin. She's not the leader of the opposition in the first place, as far as I'm concerned, because she might as well sit over on the government benches on every issue now, from immigration right across. She's talking opposition on different issues. But they're agreeing with the government. When we have votes against the government, the number that he's gone missing, TDs go missing to ensure the government is everything to do is passed. There's no opposition except for Carl Nolan, us in the rural independence, uh, and to, to be fair to them as a party. All the other parties are in unison. It's a pretty strange place in here. It's weird that we have no opposition. Sinn Féin, and worse than that, like she said, she wouldn't accept the people's uh, uh, decision that she'd rerun this with a different wording if she's in government. So I don't hope the day will never come that she will be in government because... I was actually shocked, actually, when I, when I actually read that she actually said that because Sinn Féin pride themselves on being dem- democratic and different to the rest. And they talk so much about being the, the alternative and the change that people wanted. But people don't want the same again. And there's no difference, as, as my colleague Matty has said, there's absolutely no difference between Sinn Féin and the government parties. No. Sinn, Féin, Sinn Féin have come in, they've sat on their hands on every issue, whether it be immigration, whether it be this issue that we're dealing with now. And I, I would be concerned. I, I do feel also that maybe the NGOs might have a grip there on Sinn Féin and uh, that they, they don't seem, they're definitely not the alternative. You know, we've had to show leadership in regard to issues on immigration. We called a vote on immigration. Sinn Féin didn't support us um, when we, we couldn't get 10 people to stand up to call a vote. So, so they're not supporting and, and they're not a strong opposition at all. In fact, they're not a strong party, full stop. Their policies are weak and I, I feel certainly that uh, they've let people down, particularly working class communities here in Dublin, they've let them down terribly. That's what I'm getting back. We have made it very clear from the word go, we're voting no um, on both sides of the referendum. Uh, I think people are extremely, extremely confused. Quite a lot of people haven't got the documentation, e- even as of yet, um, from from our, our, our national government that was meant to go to reach people. Uh, so they're confused. Uh, a lot of people ask me the question, why is there 20 million being spent on a referendum uh, that people don't understand? and probably feel that we don't need. And the, the answer to the questions that I would be, uh, that I've been asked is, uh, have women been restricted uh, in the current uh, constitution we have in the state? And I'm absolutely convinced they haven't. And any good woman that's out there in this country, my God, there is t- hundreds of thousands of great women uh, in, in this country, have excelled, have excelled in the, in, 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 uh, through their fields. We can see it, we've had two women presidents in this country. If our constitution blocks somebody, how could anyone become president of this country? So, I mean, it's astonishing to think that this com- government feels that they have to do something more to uh, give w- women the freedom. I don't know where. 
how high an office of the land you can get above the president of your own country. And two women have held that over the last few years. We need to be discussing issues on, on, on in, uh, people, I suppose, are, are basically finding it difficult on their day-to-day -day incomes. There's a housing crisis here um, uh, beyond uh, in, in, uh, belief. There's a health crisis here beyond words. It's costing 20 million to run this campaign for the government. How far would 20 million go in, for people with disabilities? How far would it go to protect people, in, the most vulnerable in this country? If people looked at the media for the last week or two, they will now see government officials coming out now saying they're going to vote no, because they now know that the independents got it right. We looked at the Constitution, we saw the wording on the Constitution is wrong for what they're trying to do. Now they're now, one by one, are jumping ship. And people should actually go online and look at prime time and see how the tarnister got destroyed on the media last night. And that will actually tell people in this country to vote no. What do you think about the Department of Integration's Minister Roger O'Gorman's refusal to publish the minutes of 16 meetings held in relation to the possible outcomes of the referendum, should they pass? Well, again, it shows how, um, I think, non-structured the government are in, in the approach to this referendum. I think they're actually all over the place. And I think they know they're in serious trouble of losing this because they have mismanaged it from the word law, including the Minister Roger Garman. Even yesterday's, uh, we, we, inside the Independence, showed a piece, uh, a newspaper, where Minister Heather Humphreys was offering better uh, resources for people, for carers after this. Buying, vo buying the votes? Is that what they are, is that what they reduced this referendum to? To frighten people to think they'd get an extra few quid? If they'd vote the right way, that's an astonishing abuse of power. Independent Ireland has always stood up to say we were going to say no uh, uh, until we see the proper legislation, if there was something there that would enhance and improve going forward. It's not there. So people in this country, after seeing different referendums go through, now really realise when they're being sold to pub. And now they're going back to the independents, which are the true voice of Ireland. And they're saying, these people tell the truth. They're not afraid to stand up. Will we get it right all the time? No, we won't. Will we keep trying for, to better people's lives? Yes, we will. 